Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your good morning, everyone. Good morning. And good morning, everyone, in your homes, in your kitchens, in your living rooms, wherever you are, welcome as we join together in prayer to the Father. I suppose one of the difficult things in life is to be surrounded by miserable people. But happily, here for this Mass, I am surrounded by four very happy people, all very accommodating. And we have Michael Donovan, who's family were from Dundalk. His grandfather built the Trinity Bridge in Dublin. So if you're ever walking across the Trinity Bridge, you can remember Michael and smile. Rona O'Leary, she's actually been in St. Philip's longer than I have. She was here when Father Healy was here and Father O'Rourke. And we are delighted to have Rona. She works with Genentech from Killarney. And you know, people from Killarney, they feel very important, very proud. <laughs> and then we have, to break it up, Mary McKeever from Donegal. So it's lovely to have Mary. She is the principal here at St. Philip's and has done a wonderful job since she has joined the staff of the school. And we are also delighted because Mary is musical. She does the Celtic choir and sort of music is in her bones. So 
Thank you, Mary. And then we have Celine. We all know Celine. She is just one of those gems in the community that we are so happy to have. She runs, as you know, the pastoral centre and most things around the place. And she also has a beautiful voice. So today I say thank you to the four of you for being here, for bringing this prayer moment to so many people around the Bay Area. In this Mass, we remember Catherine K. Davis, an aunt of Joanne Hayes White, who passed away in San Anselmo. And we remember Declan McCarthy, Angus McCarthy's brother, who passed away in Galway. Angus is a board member of the Irish Pastor Centre. And Helen O'Sullivan, Pat Stack's sister, who passed away in hospital in County Limerick. And we pray for Michael Irving, Father Jerry O'Rourke and his sister Noni in Ireland, that they recover fullness of health. So we begin this time of celebration by asking God's forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments, and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptised, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper keeper, opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, A man, a man, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep, and all who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
I'm sure all of you at some time in your life would have been away from home and sent a postcard back. You remember the days of the postcards? Now you're probably a bit too young, but when I was growing up in the 80s, it was always lovely to receive a postcard from someone who was away on holidays. And it was nice to see the different places. But then, the mobile phone, Facebook, communications, it changed dramatically. And nowadays, I don't think people send photograph postcards anymore. But I never thought a postcard could bring such comfort to a widowed mother on the death of her son. Jimmy was her son from a small parish in Donegal, and he had to go to London to find work. And he came home regularly, and when he would go back, the mother would say to him, send a postcard so I know you got back safely. And so regularly, when he would come home, he would go back and he would get a postcard, send it to his mother, and it always said, Mum, thank you for a lovely weekend, a lovely holiday. I got back safely. I miss you. You're the best mum in the world, Jimmy. Every time he went away, he did the same thing. But he was always lonely leaving home. He posted the card in London. He got into his car and he was hit by a truck and he was killed. And it took about a week to get the body home. In the meantime, the mother was getting sympathy cards and mass cards, and the postcard came in the middle of it. And she held that postcard like it was the most important thing in her life. Because the postcard was a tangible memory of him. She was able to identify the postcard with his presence. When I was at the wake and I said the rosary, she showed me the postcard and the body in the coffin over which I prayed eternal rest. It wasn't as important that moment as the card, because that card was something special. It was lit, usually the rosaries were 12 o'clock at night, and when I got home, I was making the connection between the card and the Eucharist, the ultimate gifts of love. The card and the bread are worthless in themselves, but something transforms them, transubstantiates them, so that they take on the presence of a loved one or a divine one. I found the grace of the card an encouragement on deepening my awareness of the grace of the sacrament. Because so often today we identify or understand presence as the physical presence as people in front of us. And John's Gospel, they wanted a sign. 
And Jesus said, It was not Moses that gave you bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you bread from heaven. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. You know, in these days of confinement or semi-confinement, we miss the presence of family, of friends, of children coming to visit. These days of staying home, of staying safe, and that's important. But even with human relationships, we need more. There is a need, a yearning for something more. And the Eucharist, Christ present in bread and wine, is the source of our final peace and joy. He said, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. And today he says, I am the good shepherd. We think of his immediate presence to us. You know, happiness is the goal of faith, and it's the outward sign. We're in the hands of the shepherd who is present to us, who speaks gentle words to us, words of consolation, words of victory, words of hope. And it's the reason for our joy, for our happiness. You know, always laugh and be happy. You know, give someone a reason to smile this day because the Lord has risen. He has appeared to the apostles. He has told us, I am the good shepherd. Mark Twain said that happiness is mankind's greatest blessing. Faith, hope and love is shown through our lives, through the happiness, this great gift of joy that God gives us that others can share and we can share with others. So may the blessing of the faith in your lives be a source of the happiness that you bring with you each day of your lives. Now we will continue with the prayers of this Mass and Roma is going to lead us in prayer. Loving God, we bring these special prayers to you, knowing that you care for us and love us always. For the Church and all who lead us, for this Archdiocese, this parish, and all people who seek God in any way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For international leaders, that they work together to combat the virus and reduce levels of infection everywhere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, lab staff and health workers, that they have time to rest and recover from their work, that they be protected from the virus and that their work bears the fruit of healthy and grateful people and communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those providing essential services, that their work be accepted with gratitude and that they will remain healthy and be protected from the virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this World Day of Prayer for Vocations, we pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially in places where the need is the greatest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Philip community and all Christians, that we strive to be of one heart and one mind in the risen Christ. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the homebound, and those who have no one to pray for them, that God will provide for them in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Catherine K. Davis, Declan McCarthy, Helen O'Sullivan, and Sheila Corey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who are sick, Michael Irving, Father Jerry O'Rourke, and his sister Nomi, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this month of May, the month of Mary, we commend all our prayers to her intercession as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. 
and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Salvador, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember your servants whom you have called from this life. Catherine K. Davis, Declan McCarthy, Helen O'Sullivan, and Sheila Corey, whose anniversary is at this time. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share et eternal life with Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, the Apostle, St. Philip, St. Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
And we pray the prayer that Christ himself taught us, uh, together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Maybe you shouldn't tell these today. I think they're getting worse as we go along. <laughs> you know, when the restaurants are all closed, and um, this man said to the waitress, what is that fly doing in my soup? And she looked at him and said, I think it's the backstroke. <laughs> <laughs> Guess worse, fellow with the spider in the soup. What is the spider doing in my soup? Get the manager. And the waitress said to him, he's scared of them too. <laughs> but there was the woman who had accompanied her husband to the doctor. And after the checkup, the doctor asked her to come in to his office. And he said, Your husband is suffering from severe stress disorder. If you don't take some action, he's going to be in a really bad way. He can die. So he said, I suggest for the next six months, you cook him a nice breakfast, you be pleasant to him. You don't burden him with your problems. And after about six months, he will make a full recovery. So on the way home, the husband inquired, what did the doctor say to you? She thought for a minute, he said, you're going to die. <laughs> now the last one, the fellow broke up with his girlfriend and he said, my dear Susan, I've been so desolate since I broke off our engagement, simply devastated. I want you to please consider coming back to me. I can never find another woman like you. Won't you forgive me and please come back to me. We make a new beginning. Yours truly, John. And the P.S. Congratulations on winning the lottery. <laughs> You know, the, the faith that we have, it encourages joy, it encourages peace. So somebody wrote a thing very short. He said, one song can spark a moment. One tree can start a forest. One bird can herald spring. One smile begins a friendship. One life can make the difference. You see, it's up to you. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is now ended. We go in peace.
Thank you.